and Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Now, I'm sharing while I'm on a roll because sometimes we don't understand why we lose battles. Okay, we're still on the same subject. But sometimes we don't understand why we lose. And one of the reasons is our mind is not made up. Now, when you're determined, like I was talking about Edith Bunker, when she had it up to there and it was like, uh-uh, buddy, you, you're not crossing this line. This is my turf right here. And you're not having anything to say about it. When she did that, she would rise up against him. No intimidation, no apology, no nothing. Boom. I done laid down the law. Now you deal with it. And you will get over it. Now, that attitude is when your mind is made up and you know what you want and you go after it with everything in your fiber. But when your mind is not made up, that's where the hardest battles are. And normally you lose because you want what you're trying not to do more than you want the victory from doing it. That's the hard part. That is the hard part. Um, I'm trying to think of an analogy to pull with that. I'll just share my my uh, my testimony real quick. And if God drops me, give me some ideas, Lord. Because I know that this is where a lot of people are. And I want you to hear this. When I was saved, it, I was 27. I had spent all day in church, went to morning service, went out to eat, went to night, uh, afternoon service, uh, you know, went out, had some coffee and soup, went back to night service. I hadn't had a cigarette all day. Now, I had a two-pack-a-day habit. Two packs. Not two cigarettes. Two packs. And I had been smoking for 15 years. Yeah, started young. The two-pack-a-day started when I started working. Now listen. The one thing I had made up my mind was I did not want to play games. Because one thing I hated were Christian hypocrites. I had seen so many. It was a turnoff. That's what took me so long to give my heart to the Lord. That's what made me so cynical. So, here I am at the house. Now, I have a full pack of cigarettes and an empty pocket. So there is no money to buy a pack if I destroy this one and can't get over it. And yes, I had a lot of fear because I didn't know God. I just gave my heart to him. I didn't know who he was, what he was about, never experienced him. This was all totally faith at this point. Or hope for some faith. Now, here I am. The one thing I learned in church, the one thing that stuck with me was a prayer style that they would use when they would fight off the enemy in different ways. They always said things like this. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Or they would say, um... I cast you out, Satan, in Jesus' name. I mean, they would they were always uh shooing Satan away using the powerful name of Jesus. Well, I didn't really know how powerful the name of Jesus was. I, you know, all I knew was that's what they said. And that's all I knew. I didn't know any other weapon. I was a baby Christian, just born that morning. <laughs> so what I did was after I got through going back and forth with, I don't think it says anything in the Bible about thou shalt not smoke. The Lord spoke to me and said, your body is the temple of God. Ooh, well, that let me know he really didn't want me to smoke. And what am I supposed to do now? I want me a cigarette. But here's the trip. This is how I knew it was kind of a temptation from the devil rather than a normal cigarette craving. I wanted that cigarette more than I ever wanted a cigarette ever 
in my whole career of cigarette smoking. Mmm. Well, I started smelling a rat and got a, I started getting real suspicious about this particular desire. So I said, let me try what the people in church try. You know what I hear them say. And I said, now, God, I'm bargaining now, right? I'm really bargaining. I said, now, God, if you don't want me to smoke, I mean, really don't want me to smoke. Oh, yeah. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this prayer. I'm going to say these words. If it works, then I know you don't want me to smoke. If it doesn't work, I'm going to smoke. I was just being real. I took them cigarettes because part of me did not want to fall back on my word. I meant it. Honestly, I didn't know how much I meant it until I was faced with this test. Imagine this is a pack of cigarettes. It's a receipt. I took those cigarettes, full pack. It was 19 cigarettes in the 20 pack. And one cigarette was all I had smoked the day before I got saved or the night before I got saved. So here I am, no money, no store was open. It was late Sunday night and I only had this pack to fall on. And I'm about to destroy it because like Edith Bunker and... You hear me? Something is rising up like Tina Turner that says, Enough! I'm going to do this! And I took those cigarettes and I literally mangled them till they were falling in little crumbs and pieces. I mean I mangled them. I had, check it out, I had opportunity because I had zigzags in the house. Now, for those of you who don't know what zigzags are, look it up. <clears throat> but for those of you who do and what they're for, you know, I would have gathered that tobacco and rolled them babies back up and started smoking. Yeah. Well, ah. I didn't want, listen to what I'm saying. I was so determined not to fall back that I threw my cigarettes in, over some wet trash because then I could not retrieve the tobacco crumbs. And I knew that one way or another, I was not going to smoke that night. But I was afraid because I didn't have a lot of faith. What am I believing in? I'm, I'm just trying this thing on for size. I was afraid I was going to suffer all night long. Do you hear me? I'm considering the pain. The anguish, the agony of defeat. But I didn't want to give in. So I didn't give in. And I was determined. Now this is what I said. I'm tearing up the cigarettes. And I said, with my eyes clenched, because I was as scared as a, as a mouse cornered by a cat. I said, I rebuke the desire for these cigarettes. In the name of Jesus. Uh, I mean, my eyes were clenched, were qu uh, clenched closed because I didn't know what to expect. I just said some words. <laughs> I didn't even know what they really meant. Let me tell you what happened. Because I put myself in a precarious position where I would have to suffer if God hadn't shown me. I, as soon as the words came out of my mouth and the cigarettes left my hands, all three happened at one time. My words, the cigarettes in the trash, and something on my chest that I didn't even know was there jumped off of me. It was a physical experience. And all of a sudden, whew, this thing wasn't on me anymore. And the desire was gone just like that. That kind of, of deliverance usually comes from that 
kind of determination. Just like Edith, just like uh, Tina Turner, I was free because my mind was made up. That's the problem. When your mind is not made up, you teeter, you totter, you teeter, you totter, yay, nay, yes, no, okay, uh-uh. And you back and forth. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Up one minute, down the next. In like Flynn, out. Just totally out. So you end up living a yo-yo life. And you get so tired of the struggle. You get so tired of the discouragement, the condemnation, and the defeat. Well, let me tell you this. Make an example. When something is pulling you up, what do you have to fight against? Let's just imagine God pulling you up. You have to, I'm trying to find something with weight. Okay, now this cup is heavy. And in order to pick it up, I have to resist the weight and resist gravity. And I have to lift and lift and lift to get it where I want it to go, correct? Or lift it to my mouth, whatever. I'm resisting the pull of gravity and the weight of the cup to get it to my mouth, especially if it's full of coffee. Then you got liquid adding weight. Now, here's the thing. If I hold the cup up in the air, okay, watch this. If I hold the cup up in the air and I drop it, does that take any effort? No. The reason it takes no effort on my part is because gravity takes over. The weight takes over. And whatever's inside adding to that weight. That's the same way with us. It takes a lot of effort to rise up out of our norm. It takes effort to fight against the drag of temptation that's been part of us all those years. It takes effort to get up off of our comfort zone and take a step of faith and walk forward when we really want to sit back down and lay back down on a prone position and, and lay in our bed of ease. It doesn't take effort to lay down. It doesn't take effort to be defeated. But boy, I'm telling you, it takes some effort to get up and take your freedom. Your mind has to be made up, I'm telling you. And you don't know if it's made up until you go through and achieve your victory. But if you go through and you slow down midway, and you start looking back like Lot's wife did and turned into a pillar of salt. You turn back in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart, in your fiber, in your desires. And you start longing for that thing and thinking. You know, there's a scripture in uh, Proverbs 23. And it describes how the wine is in the cup. And when the wine is in the cup and you're looking at it and you're swirling it around and the color and it's enticing to look at. Even people who don't drink, you look at a thing of wine, it looks so good, especially when it's red or it's purple. And you're just looking at it like, oh, I wonder what that tastes like. Oh, maybe I'll take me a little sip because it looks appetizing. Well, guess what, baby? Satan ain't going to uh, uh, tempt you with something that's ugly. He's not going to tempt you with something that doesn't feel good. He knows. He knows what rocked your world before. He knows what kind of women you like. He knows what kind of men you like. He knows the car. He knows the kind of money action you like to have. He knows what gets you high. 
He knows how to lure you out and who to use to do so. All of a sudden, people come out the woodwork. I'm like, hey, girl, come on. Come on, man. What you doing, bro? Come on. Don't be such a, a stick in the mud. Come on. What you talking about all that church stuff? You go on Sunday now. Come on, hang with us. What's all that from? The enemy knows that if your mind isn't made up, oh, boy, they're going to reel you back in. And snatch you off and cut that cord that you tried to sow with the Lord. Because he wants you back. He wants his flunkies. Misery loves company, baby. Satan is miserable. And he wants all the company he can get. Don't be double-minded. Have a made-up mind. That is your safety valve. That is your lifesaver. To have a made-up mind. Mind. Don't be double-minded. That is where you fall and lose. Please. Walk away while you can. Run, don't walk, whatever you got to do. Remember Joseph in the Old Testament? He sat there and he was being in, uh, uh, in, in, enticed. <laughs> yeah. And this woman was a married woman. And he did not want to disrespect her husband. So what did he do? She had his robe. And he ran out of his robe. He ran from the woman. Buck naked. So that he would not sin against God, against his boss, and against her. Are you running from sin? Or are you saying... Who knows? Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe no. I don't know. What am I going to do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Ooh, I can do. No, no, no. I don't do. I don't want to do. I don't want to do. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh, but it looks so good. Oh, I remember the last time it felt so good. No, no, no. Oh, she! what the heck was one more time? Double-minded. Your mind's not made up. Hmm. Same with you women who get abused. Same with you who are hooked on dope. When you have enough, oh, you'll know. And so will God, and so will the devil. Anyway, ask God for a made-up mind. If yours isn't made up, be honest about it. See, Lord, I'm not sure I'm convinced I really want it this way. He'll help you if you ask him to. And you will get the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He bought me and sought me with his redeeming power. He sought me ere I knew him. Uh, all Oh, shoot, forget it. I can't remember the words to that song. If I sang it, I would know it, but I don't feel like singing tonight. Too hoarse. But listen, you guys, keep a made-up mind. I'm done. Good night. Love you.